So in this part, I want to clean up all of the warnings that we've been getting uh, so far in the tutorial series, just so that we're up to a good point before we continue. Um, so let's start with all of these, the parameters never used uh, warnings. So if we click on each of those and they say like, okay, delt hasn't been used, so underscore it, then we can just uh, find it and then underscore it, or we can not assign it at all. So in this case, I'll just do hurtbox.hit and we don't need to assign the return value to anything. And uh, this next one, p actor, I'll just underscore it for both of those uh, function parameters when we don't use it. And let's do the same thing for any of the other tick or other action leaf related functions. Okay, and in this case, we did use the blackboard, so we don't want to underscore that one. But in this one, we're not using the blackboard, so we underscore it. And then here, underscore and underscore. Oh, nope, just for the actor, actually. Okay, here is another actor and blackboard. On this one, actor and blackboard underscore them. On this was hit function, we're not using the hit data. We just interrupt, so we don't need the hit data. And on the before run, looks like we're not using the blackboard. And I guess, no, we are using the actor. On after run though, we're not using the actor or the blackboard. So if I clear here and we hit run and let's just, you know, do normal stuff, we should see a lot of the warning messages disappear. So now that most of those are cleaned up, uh, we can finish up just with this last one. This tick doesn't use actor. And let's see, uh, on this one, the variable Randy has the same name as a built-in function. We can see that uh, if we type in Randy, we can see that you can generate uh, a random number. And I guess even without having a random number generator act, and I guess even without having a random number generator object like we created in a previous video, uh, so I'm just going to take this and say uh, random integer and change the value down here. So now that this doesn't use the same name, there shouldn't be a conflict there. On uh, this part, force vector is already um, a shadowing and already declared variable. If we look at the top, we have the force vector there. So calculate force vector. We could just rename this to be calculated vector and then return the calculated vector. So it's just important to make sure the names don't match properties because otherwise there can be some confusion there. And let's see here, the spawn position is never used. So spawn position equals P health global position. What we probably want to do is take spawn position and replace it here. Okay, so we got the spawn position, we're setting it here and Let's just kind of clarify why we're using phealth.globalPosition because it's the spawn position of our text instance. And let's see, p new is never used, so we can underscore that parameter as well. And in this class, the combat state health changed is never explicitly uh, used. So for that, I think we can do at warning ignore, and we're looking for unused signal. Okay, um, because the idea here is that we are going to use it through the combat state. We're just doing it through other objects. So uh, our health object emits the health change signal through the combat state, and that's getting sent to uh, the combat text. So the combat text system, if we look in there, it responds to the health change on the combat state. So we don't need to worry about how this isn't used internally in this class because it's actually being used through the class by the health object. Um, so we can ignore that for right now with warning ignore. Okay, let's hit play and see where we're at. I guess we have one more warning to go through. So that's uh, object stats resource not local to scene. So uh, that's kind of what we expected that um, an object stats should always be local to the scene because they are going to be unique per object. So what I want to do here is set a breakpoint and see which object we did not set local to the scene on. So if we check self, uh, it's a type of character stats. Um, let's see, is there anything that we can use to see which object this was? Unfortunately, it doesn't look like it. Um, so I'll go through the scenes and just see where that's not local. So in player stats, if we open resource, we can see this isn't local to the scene. So we need to set that local to the scene. If we hit play now, 
okay, that debug message goes away. So that warning was just there because we want to make sure if there's multiple copies of the player, that each um, copy of the player stats or the object stats, which this is a child class of, is uh, unique to that character. Now, um, originally we were doing that because the current health was also set on the player stats, object stats. But uh, at this point, this is more just like a stat block that we use, not one that we modify. So it's possible that uh, we might not need that to be there anymore. Uh, but just as written, we wanted to correct that warning and we have. So that basically clears up all of the warnings that we've had in the uh, tutorial so far. So now we can start working on other stuff in the final few parts of the series.